Hi, this is Cassandra from Homeschool Peace. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you the Matthew C. Algebra and Decimal Insert Kit. This kit is used along with their Zeta program as well as the Matthew C. Pre-Algebra and Legacy Algebra programs. In today's video, I'm just gonna be sharing what's included inside this box as well as some simple examples on how to use the inserts and the blocks. Here in our home, we've been using Matthew C from the early elementary primer alpha level, the whole way through up until right now, we're going into Zeta this year for my oldest student. With that, that's why we do have the decimal and insert kit because this one is used with this program. If you are interested in this insert kit, maybe you're moving into those levels, you will wanna also make sure that you have the Matthew C interlocking basic set. This basic set of blocks, it has been used on all of the levels moving into this Zeta program. So if you don't know a lot about Matthew C and you're interested in it, I do have some videos linked below on my channel that I've walked through the Matthew C program. Go check out those links if you wanna know more about Matthew C. But right now we're gonna go in and take a look at the inside of this new insert kit. The algebra and decimal insert kit comes in a nice cardboard box. It opens up and has some great dividers already in place, which is something great because you can store it right here if you didn't have another bin or box that you were using. In the center is a small booklet. It does have some examples in it. I would recommend reading through it. It was actually helpful. It's small, but very helpful to go through just understanding what the different blocks and inserts are for. The first sort of center large area to start with is these large green smooth inserts. These inserts are work with the large red blocks that you have. These are your 100 blocks that you had with the uh, interlocking basic set. And you're gonna have your student turn it over to where you have the uh, little grids on the back side of the block and has these little circles around the sides which it snaps right into place. And so now you have created a giant green smooth block. If your student has been using math, you see they probably already know that green represents a unit. So we have one of these unit blocks and tiny little green ones. So what we've done is basically blown up this small green block into one large block representing sort of like the top of the block. And so this represents one. This will be very helpful when going through your decimals or adding or subtracting money. And so this represents a single whole one large unit. So we have one here. Then the next block to go through we have are these small uh, blue, overlays smooth as well same little small circles and this comes and gets connected with the 10 blocks that are from the interlocking set again you'd flip over the block and now here we have this open grid it snaps right into place so your student already knows that blue these blue long blocks represent 10 so when we flip it over and we have the smooth side this is going to represent a tenth obviously important with adding money or adding decimals. So now the next block to share is what's inside here. These ones are just small red blocks. They're very similar to those sort of size of the green units, but these are red, which is really great because your kids probably already know that red means 100. So when we're working with a decimal, this red is going to represent 100th. So you can have your student put together these block so we have a single one. I added these small little black circles on my own just to help raise my kid with a decimal point. And so now we have a tenth and now we have a hundredth. So if we were talking money here, obviously we'd have $1 and 11 cents and you can see that sort of blown up here that with this large green and the student can put these together and then add the decimals together. There is more in this box. There is these small gray smooth ones. These are going to move into your pre-algebra level. These ones are going to represent a negative X, something that you don't know, a negative number. And then for these large red ones. These are going to be used later on when we're solving for X. And this would be like X squared. This is going to be moving into your algebra level. And so you have a handful of these green large ones, a handful of these red smooth ones, and then a lot of these blues and grays. And that's what's included inside this box. So let's go and play with these blocks a little bit and add up some decimals. 
So starting first with a real simple problem, I have here uh, a single one, it's that nice smooth green side, my decimal point that I added, just these little black circles, and then I have 43 hundredths, it might be easier just to say $1.43, and on the second row I have another smooth one, and I have uh, 25 hundredths, so we can just say $1.25. So I'm adding up the $1.43 plus $1.25. The kids are, are lining them up in the right color, the right column, everything's in its right place. It's really helpful because sometimes kids, when doing a problem, they might mix up where the decimal point is. This They can easily visually see where the lines are. So adding first on this side, the five and the three, they're gonna get eight. Then I'm gonna have them add the four and the two together. So now we have six. Our decimal point's obviously gonna stay right there, and we have two. So just moving everything in its right spot, your student will be able to say that the answer is $2.68. Easily seen right here in front. So now let's go ahead and go do one that I have to actually carry the numbers. For the next example, I'm going to be adding one and 68 hundredths, or we can say $1.68 plus 63 hundredths or 63 cents. So to start off, my student can see that everything's in its right place because of those colors, it's really helpful. I'm gonna have them first start over here on this side with the red. They're going to take those little small red blocks, sort of line them up. We have eight at the top and then the three at the bottom so they can, just as they've learned from the other levels of the program, take two from that bottom. So now that they now they have 10 of the small hundredth blocks and they can line it up and compare it to one of these 10 blocks, seeing that they equal and are the same size. So we're going to move this 10th block into this 10th cat, uh, column, and we're gonna get rid of all of these red small blocks that we don't need anymore, leaving just one single hundredth down there. So now in this 10th column, I'm going to have my student put together 10 of these blocks. They know that it takes 10 of these to create one of these holes. So uh, 10 of these tenths equal one of these. They can see and compare the size. So we're gonna get rid of these 10 and move them off to the side, moving this one into this column. And so now they can take it and put it all together and see that those two numbers added together will equal two and 31 hundredths or $2.31. The next example I'm gonna give you is multiplying a decimal number. So the example I have right now is going to be one and five tenths. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this up as my one, and then these are my tenth, the tenth bar, and I'm going to put it alongside right here. And I have five of them. And I'm going to multiply 1.5 by 1.3. So, to put them up here, I have now three. So you have 1.5 uh, multiplied by 1.3. Now we have to make this into a full rectangle. To, so to fill this spot, we're going to be using these small hundredth blocks and it will all make sense once we pull it back all together again. So you're gonna fill, have your child fill this spot so each row is filled. And once they have completed this and made a full rectangle, then we're going to pull it back across and be able to take a look at the actual number. All right, so again, we have 1.5 multiplied by 1.3. And so at this moment, now you'd have your child move these everything back in its own spot. So we have our single one by itself along with our decimal point. These blues for tenths, you can put these back into its right spot. Right now we can see that we have eight of them. And then here we have a bunch of these little reds. Now for these reds, we wanna sort of group them together. Um, here is five and five, so now we can swap that out for one of these 10 smooth, the tenth block. And so we can see those line up, it's the same thing. So you're gonna have your student move it over into this section so we don't need these red anymore. So now we can bring these five back into place and then easily we can see that that 1.5 
multiply by 1.3. Just by moving some blocks around, your student can get to the answer that the answer is 1.95 or $1.95. They can see that visually after multiplying those two numbers together. For my last example, it's just something that would come later in the algebra level. So here I have this block. I have the red block, but instead of having that smooth red overlay. And so this is going to represent my X. So I have a problem that's gonna be X plus two, and I'm gonna use these blue smooths. So X plus two, and I'm going to multiply that by X um, plus another two. So we have X plus two, multiplied by x plus two. To fill this gap here, to give us to making the full rectangle, I'm gonna be using my small unit blocks. I'm gonna slide those right in. And so now I can sort of break up this again to get my, to solve for it, to solve my answer um, is going to be x squared, because it's is squared. So x squared plus four, I'm gonna say four x, that'll get to, uh, be a part of that algebra level, so four x, plus four. So that's how I would break down that problem. So hopefully that example helps you out. If you have any other questions about this kit or if you wanted to see anything else in the Zeta level, I'd love to hear from you. Just leave those comments below. Before you leave, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.